All right, the good part is we are past the earth science stuff. We're not talking about volcanism and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get into the individual um, continents now and go through these sections. We're going to look at the U.S. and Canada's physical geography. How does physical geography differ from, say, political geography? Anybody know? No ideas? Political geography is where you're talking about the borders of states and nations. It's politics. While physical geography is about what the land was like. Are there mountains? Are there rivers? It's descriptive, okay? So they're a little bit different. We usually think of political geography in, in a look at maps. But uh, this is oftentimes more useful to us. When we talk about physical geography, the U.S. has a lot of provinces. You don't have to write this down. But each one of these sections will have something, some kind of a physical characteristic in common. So right here in East Texas, which one of these regions are we in? Can you tell? Alfred Plain. Atlantic Plain. Atlantic. Plain. The Atlantic Plain. Now, I will tell you that some textbooks will break this down further and make this the Gulf Coastal Plain. Okay? So it, it's... It's a little different, but it's it's always going to be a a plane along some kind of a coastal plane. Okay. Canada share several uh, geographic features. One of these are our major mountain ranges. And there are three major mountain ranges in the U.S. and Canada. And you could probably name two of them just off the top of your head. The Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains are the two most famous. But there's also the Pacific Coastal Ranges. Uh, and you should at least be a little familiar with these from our plate tectonics discussions where we talked about how when the plates come together, uh, they can form mountain ranges. So you get the Rocky Mountains out on the west coast, almost on the west coast. You have the Appalachian Mountains along the east coast. And then you have that Pacific Coastal Range that's part of the Ring of Fire goes up California, over through uh, Alaska, over to Russia, down through the, uh, uh, like Hawaii and the Polynesian Islands, okay? Big old circle, big old ring. The Pacific Coastal Range is that part along the Pacific Coast. All right. So, Please shorten this. You obviously don't have to write all these words, but get the gist of it down. So the Rocky Mountains extend about 3,000 miles from Alaska all the way down into New Mexico. Some people would even argue that, that they extend into Mexico. Uh, it kind of depends on where you consider the break. you got to realize that in geography, there's not clear lines. It's not like you're driving down and all of a sudden the mountains start here and they stop here. It's a gradual thing. So where, where do you consider it stopping? Uh, but the center of this, the highest point, we call this the Continental Divide. Right along the, the, the highest ridge in the middle of the Rockies. And it divides the continent east and west. Now it's not in the middle, but it divides it hot from, from the highest point. And everything on one side of the Continental Divide, all the water will, roll, will flow into the Pacific Ocean. Everything on the other side, all the water flows into the Atlantic Ocean. And it just makes sense if this is your highest point on the continent, Water can't flow uphill, so when it rains, it's going to flow down both sides of the mountain, and some will end up at the Atlantic and some in the Pacific. 
Now, it's not like it just runs directly there. It runs into the river systems and the rivers run out. Um, amazing, amazing way that this, that this drains everything. Anybody ever seen the Colorado River? Yeah. Been to the Grand Canyon? Yeah. If you ever get to go to the Grand Canyon, it's this beautiful spot. We'll look, see a picture in a little while. That was carved by the Colorado River. But over time, because we've dammed the Colorado River up, it no longer ends in the, in the ocean. Uh, it used to go all the way down through to Mexico and then out into the Gulf of Mexico. But over the last 10 years, it has not reached the Gulf because so much water is siphoned off in the United States. By the time it gets to Mexico, it's a trickle or it's just dry. So it's weird, we get this river that flows down and it just stops, it just, it's gone. So this is the Rocky Mountains. This is the part we're talking about. Now, if you could imagine, the highest part of that mountain range, right across the middle, if you just took the highest parts and went straight down the middle, everything on one side drains this way, and everything on the other side drains that way. That's why we call it the Continental Divide. Even though it's not in the middle, it does divide the continent. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, we understand how that works. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to tell you my warped sense of humor. Y'all ever heard of the Donner Party? No. Donner Pass is down there in Colorado, and it's a, it's a, a pass is a narrow spot in the mountains where you, a low spot where you can get through. And when everything else freezes, there's a spot that you can get through. And usually it's a very temporary pass. Well, Donner Pass is where the Donner family back in the 1800s, they got stuck up there trying to get through it and, and no. they, well, they had to eat go to, each other. They had to go to cannibalism and eat each other in order to survive and I think two, two made it. Now here's my warped sense of humor. I went through Donner Pass about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, maybe longer. There's an all-you-can-eat buffet at the top of Donner Pass. Is that not wrong? That is just wrong. There shouldn't be an all-you-can-eat buffet at the top of Donner Pass. <laughs> They did not think it was funny when I went in there and they asked me how many, and I said, Donner, party of 12. They didn't find that humorous at all. <laughs> well, I thought it was hilarious. All right, then we have the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachian Mountains extend about 1,600 miles north to south all the way from Newfoundland, Canada, down to Alabama. Uh, and again, some people would say down possibly even into Florida, but it, there's not a hard stop spot. Uh, Alabama's probably the better, the better place. These are beautiful mountains, but they're not nearly as majestic and large as the Rockies. They're older mountains. How can you tell an older mountain range from a younger mountain range? Anybody? Because the newer ones are going to be sharper. And newer ones are sharper, or the older ones are more rounded off because they've been weathered. Do you have a question? So, this is a, a lot milder mountain range. The Smoky Mountains are part of this. The Appalachian Mountains, the Great uh, uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, those are all part of this Appalachian spread. Um, you ever want an adventure? There's, there's a, a hiking trail that you can hike where you can hike this entire, entire uh, Appalachian Trail. I've always wanted to do it. I've just gotten to do parts of it, but I've always wanted to do the whole trail. How long is the trail? 16. It's about 1,600 miles. <laughs> it takes a while. But it'd be, it'd be worth it. I mean, yeah. you go four miles an hour, you can go, you can go along, you can go 30 miles a day, pretty easy. <laughs> Yeah, no. I'm doing it, Brad. I would so I do it. I would do it alone. No, you don't want to do it alone. It's dangerous. People die if they get alone. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. All right. So this is what we're talking about. Newfoundland up here all the way down into Alabama. Wait, wait, wait. The mountains are on that. that. Yeah, this is, this is part of it, too, yeah. Uh, 
Well, what's happened is this, it didn't used to be a bay here. Uh -huh. And over time, glaciers have come down and carved this out. So uh, that's, that's how things work. Uh, millions of years ago. So this is kind of the, the, the mountains that we think of when we think of, of the United States most of the time. Uh, a lot of us would just call these hills. They wouldn't even call these mountains, uh, even though they, they can be pretty majestic at times. The Pacific Coastal Range is right here along that Pacific Coast, and it actually goes up further, but it's, it's up on this map, it's just showing you the North America, or in the United States. Stretching from Southern California to Washington, really up into Canada and down to Mexico too, uh, down to Baja, Mexico. The big thing about this is that it's part of the Ring of Fire. What's, what's the Ring of Fire again? Wow. Uh, Volcanic and where the plates are. Yeah, it's where the plates meet, right? And it tends to be a spot where there's a lot of tectonic activity whether that be uh, volcanoes or earthquakes. I don't write this down because we're going to do each one of these individually. We're going to talk about the Canadian Shield, the interior lowlands, the Gulf Coastal Plains, basins and ranges, Great Plains, and of course the Grand Canyon area. Okay? So the Canadian Shield, write, write it down now. Canadian Shield is an area up around Hudson Bay in Canada where glaciers have come down and scraped off and bedrock is left. Have you ever seen bedrock? It's a just this large surface of hard rock. And that bedrock has forms a shield over this area. So rocky, mainly flat area right around Hudson Bay. Not good farmland. You can't break bedrock. Not you can, break. but it's really hard. It's very stable. Not a diamond. That's diamond why uh, can do it. Uh, all of your, your skyscrapers, they always dig down to bedrock and establish them on it so they don't settle. Because if you don't do that, your skyscraper will eventually fall over. So you can't dig into a sky. Can't dig into a sky? No. Skyscraper can't dig into it. It would be very hard. It would be very, very hard. Why, are you planning a heist? No, no. It would be cool to dig inside a skyscraper. You're really weird. <laughs> All right, so this is what we call the Canadian Shield right here, okay? This whole area is just kind of exposed bedrock. Uh, Y'all watch, uh, oh, Gold Hunters or Gold Rush on TV ever? They're over here in this part of this. They're okay. Yeah, they are. The interior lowlands. You can imagine just from the name what this is going to be. And if you know the name, you kind of know where it is. Interior, inside the United States, in the middle, lowlands. It's going to be a very swampy, very uh, uh, wet area. Okay, So it's mostly flat, has a few rolling hills, and it's going to be between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi River. Okay, Kind of part of the Mississippi River Basin. The Arctic, that's not supposed to say Arctic, it's supposed to say Atlantic. Good job. No, no, it's not. It is. It's I'm sorry. The Arctic and Gulf Coastal Plains. So we're going to look at both of these. Flat areas, they either stretch along the Gulf of Mexico or the Arctic Ocean in the north. 
So these flat areas along a gulf, whether it be the Arctic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. Y'all are all familiar with the Gulf Coastal Plain because you've all been down to it. Mm -hmm. The ocean? Yes. Yeah, the part of it. What's Florida? Houston. Houston. Florida's part of it. Most of Florida is. I want to visit Florida. Yes, and it's beautiful. I went to Some parts. Some parts are very good. What's a tundra again? What's a what? A tundra. We'll get to it, but a tundra is where the, where the top soil is frozen, where the ground's actually frozen. We, went, we only went to the one, one little part. That was the cleanest. Like yeah. you can see all the way to the bottom. Wow. All right, so there's the Arctic, uh, Arctic plain there, and there's the Gulf Coastal plain. So you can kind of get a feel for what the area that we're talking about is. And again, it's a little misleading sometimes because there's not a clear, hard pressed line. Because in this map, we're in, we're part of the Gulf Coastal plain. But I don't think most of us would consider this Gulf Coastal plain. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're a little further inland, but not by much. I would say you get the other side of luck and you're in it. All of Louisiana is just... All of Louisiana is in it. All of Louisiana is a swamp. All right, basin and range area. Uh, this is not nearly as large as the others. It's mostly going to be in Nevada. And it's going to have a lot of rocky outcroppings. What that means is uh, it's going to have a lot of these exposed, sharp rocks that are out there. Um, and the basins are these large depressions that have been dug out. Again, glacier movement has caused a lot of this. The Great Plains, large, nearly treeless flat area that goes from Canada all the way to Mexico. This is the richest farmland in North America. Now, back in the old days, they used to call it the Great American Desert because it's between the, 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 the mountain ranges, between the Appalachian and the Rockies. And because of rain shadow effect, the rain would fall on both sides of the mountain to this large dry area. Um, but because we figured out how to, uh, how to grow crops and irrigate and, and bring water from the Mississippi River, today it's nicknamed the breadbasket of America. It's where the biggest farms are because it's had all this great soil dropped on there uh, through glacial movement over, over, over time. Um, it's a lot of tornado. Tornado Alley is part of this, yeah. Y'all got the gist of this? So this is kind of the area we're talking about. Most of the time you'll see this and it'll stretch out much further to the west and east. Usually on most maps, we're considered part of the Great Plains, but it's not always. Again, it's, it's not an exact science, okay? But this is roughly the Great Plains. And you can see how Tornado Alley right through here goes right on top of it. And again, that's not exact either because frequently we're part of it, but you can see on this, we're right outside of it. Um, this is the area where tornadoes happen a lot. And why is because you've got this warm, moist air coming in from the Gulf and this cold, dry air coming, coming down from, from the Arctic area. And when they hit, when you have hot and cold, think about what happens. Hot air rises, cold air drops, and then it's, as, it, as that hot air starts to cool, it's going to get heavier and come back down. So it starts getting this cycle that happens, okay? As one's rising and one's dropping. And if that starts happening fast enough, what happens? You get a tornado, you get a cyclone, okay? Um, very destructive. Y'all have all seen that. All right, Grand Canyon, probably the most majestic thing in North America. If you ever, ever get a chance to go anywhere in the United States, go to the Grand Canyon. Um, it was formed by water erosion along the Colorado River. Uh, it's 277 miles long, 
ranges anywhere from four to 18 miles across, all carved by the Colorado River going through this porous rocky material and eroding it. Uh, most of the Grand Canyons in Arizona, although not all of it, there are different parts. You can go to Grand Canyon National Park, which is amazing, uh, or you can go over to the Indian Reservation, and the Indian Reservation built a, a skywalk a few years ago. They have a glass walkway that goes out so you can walk over the Grand Canyon looking down, and it's, it's kind of amazing. hike down or you can ride donkeys down there it takes a while or you can uh, white water raft through in camp or there's helicopters uh, that they'll take you down so it's absolutely amazing I want to take the I want to take the donkey ride down one day yeah but then my donkey would suicide and get off the side <laughs> <laughs> that's possible you, you never know what you're going to get when you rent animals I uh I rented a, horses up in Yellowstone a few years ago my wife and I did we went out back country and she got this really nice calm horse and they gave me Huckleberry and Huckleberry wanted to go really really fast and then stop and slide. <laughs> lock his legs down like a cartoon, lock his legs and slide down the mountain. Which is okay with me. It's kind of fun. So Colorado River carved all this. Again, absolutely amazing to see. That means this horse has some good breeds. Means that, means that horse hasn't been broken. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some of the groups of islands that we have in the Americas. You have the Hawaiian archipelago. All an archipelago is is a collection of islands, usually volcanic. And if we've talked about these before, they formed over a hot spot, a spot where, where uh, magma is, is seeping up and becoming lava and settling. But as the plates have moved, that hot spot hasn't. So you have these, these, these old volcanoes that are kind of sliding down, and you get this line of, uh, of islands. And you have the Aleutian Islands. These are about 300 small islands located between Alaska and Russia. Uh, we have a military base there, Adak, Alaska, the, that very last island that we own before we get to Russia. I've got a picture of a friend of mine that was stationed there as a Marine security guard. And the eagles are so big, he's standing straight out like this, feeding an eagle that's standing up on his rear feet, about this tall. Mm -hmm. And he's the same height I am. Right. 